I always like to think that if my food were a spanky, <laughs> it would be a full bare bottomed over the knee job. <laughs> Never had a hemorrhoid? No. Am I missing something here? <clears throat> Never ever? No. When you're a man of a certain age, how have you managed to avoid hemorrhoids? Would you like to know what you're having for your lunch lunch? Yeah. Soup. Soup? Soup. Homemade soup. Homemade soup. Not out of a can. Not out of a can. So this isn't going to be a slice of ginger soup, is it? Um, no, it's going to have a ginger constituent. Men behaving badly up Mrs. Brown's damn bottom. Right. Is that uh, burning out or something? Yeah. Uh, I just lost the will. I lost the will, my lovely. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> that smells nice. Um, so, at this point, you're doing your own cooking program here, but you haven't explained what you've just done. Because, sorry, sorry for you, it's my fault. Um, basically, what I'm doing is I'm making the soup that I made in the episode of Boaty in the Kitchen the week before last that he didn't watch. Yeah, so if you want to know what he's doing, and watch if, that I video. Know, if I want to know what he's doing, watch the video. I've got to watch your. Should I watch it now instead of asking you a question? Now, what's a better one that I would enjoy watching? Well, like one of my videos. No. <laughs> You're using the word enjoy in a very different way. Actually, that's what we could do. What? We could watch somebody else's video together. Oh, um, yeah, well, do like a goggle box. Yeah. Oh, gosh, that doesn't sound very entertaining at all. It does. Uh, well, except that, you know... It really does. Ow! Oh. Let's pick a channel that we're not friends with. Oh, right. Well, do you know, the whole premise of Gogglebox is that two people that you've never heard of is somehow more entertaining than the programme that we've spent lots of money making. Which I think is a little bit insulting. But that's not really the kind of thing that would bother us particularly. I didn't get where I am today by not insulting people. Where are you today? Exactly my point. Uh, that's the trouble, isn't it? You try and make it win, but it doesn't work. I was scared I had to leave. Are these people you are subscribed to? I have no idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. New activity. So. Lloyd Beard's Vehicle Consultant, Project Nigel, of course, Furious Driving. Um, wondering where, Wife Swap Daily. <laughs> if that channel doesn't exist, I'm starting it. <laughs> Dogging for the disabled. Oh, that would be nice. I'd love to think that it is. Because. I like things to be inclusive, and I would love the idea that disabled people could do dogging. Well, now, I want to be able to. If I become, if I become rich, then that's one of the things that I will do. I will buy an adapted minibus, and I will take disabled people dogging who would otherwise not be able to go. Do you want to come with me? We can take it in turns driving. I don't want to do it personally. Really? Mm. What have you got against, against disabled people? Why do you think that it's acceptable to I just don't want to drive a minibus. Well, you could sit in the passenger seat and entertain the raspberries. <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to say that. Are you not? Oh, you put some paddling in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so what is it? Nice. No, no, noodles. Ah, oh, yes. No, that's going to look familiar once you've finished then. Everything involves noodles in Bozy World. Noodles is good. Noodles is our celebration of his noodly highness. What's in the microwave? It's not a microwave, it's a cooker. Nothing. A nothing. 
I have had this oven for seven years. And you've never used it? I've used it once. Uh, I used it when Wendy came and had bacon sandwiches. Oh, right. So you used it for him? Yeah. Why, what's, what's, why would you use it for him and not for yourself? Because it's got a grill and I don't cook anything that requires a grill. Yeah. And, and I don't see the point in... And Wendy doesn't eat anything that doesn't require a grill. And I don't see the point in spending the money to heat up a massive broken oven when it's just me and I can use that little one. <clears throat> I think you've given us enough uh, give us enough reason there for, for using your own oven. I didn't like that when you called me Harry Paddington. <laughs> that was the first thing I saw when the first video of yours I watched when you had your little packet of sandwiches and your little flask of tea and I was like, oh, he's a Harry Paddington. <laughs> That's so sweet. I would have liked to have seen a picture of you and the Queen holding hands after your comment about the Queen on our lunch video. Right. And it would have been really nice to have had a meme going round of you holding the Queen's hand and I'm taking you to see your husband, ma'am, your duty is done. Except that nobody else has ever called me the Hairy Paddington before. <laughs> <laughs> How about that as a hand as your new handle for Project Nigel? The Hairy Paddington. <laughs> the Hairy Paddington. Yeah. Well yeah, I mean I do that except for well, from what I gather you're saying there, if I don't claim Project Nigel, somebody else might do. Yeah, seriously, yeah. Well, that's not fair, is it? No. Mind you, good luck to me. Could always change my YouTube channel to Harry Paddington. If there's, and I've got one dream left, that I want a woman to have Boaty tattooed on her bum cheek. That is my goal. Would you like it to be called Charles as well? Remaining goal. Oh, I don't mind. I'd love. Oh, I'd like her to have my name tattooed on the cheek. I can see a, um, a picture coming along. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you like to have your name tattooed on their bum cheek? Mind you, yours would be a bigger tattoo, Captain Mustard. Would you have? Would you have Captain Mustard like that on one bum cheek? Or would you have Captain on one cheek and Mustard on the other? Uh, well, you know, I, I do actually just want to completely dismiss that as a stupid question, which obviously... But takes. now you're thinking about it. I'm only thinking about it just for you. Thank you. So that, although it's um, completely hypothetical and that's never going to happen, I'm never actually going to be given the choice of, of where this tattoo actually goes. Um, at least, you know, I actually don't want to be. Um, but probably on one. Really? Yeah. Do you not I don't really want to have my name separated by arse cheeks. Would that not make the arse look lopsided then? But, yeah, I mean, the thing is, while she was walking along, it'd be going like that, wouldn't it? Captain Mustard, Captain Mustard. Maybe you could have a picture of you on the other cheek. Well, that's a good idea. How much would you have to have to have I heart booty tattooed on your ass. <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> ten? Uh, if I needed the ten, yeah, why not? Do I have to pay for the tattoo? Yeah. It's because it's more than a ten, isn't it? Well, yeah, I don't think you're basically this. saying, look, if you have, if <laughs> I you, don't if think you, have, you thought this through. If you have, I love booty tattooed on my ass, I'm going to get a discount. <laughs> That's all you're offering there. <clears throat> How much would you require to add I love mustard on your ass cheek? Oh, well, I do love mustard. you already got one. <laughs> I do love mustard. <laughs> um, so so <clears throat> yes, that wouldn't be too bad. I would do that for a relatively lowly sum. Um, I love mustard.
25 grand. You're not going to cheat, do you? No. I suppose the thing is, if it's on your bottom, nobody has to see it, do they? So you're asking a lot of money for uh, the admission of something that's fairly obvious in a place that no one's ever going to see. Are you saying that nobody is ever going to see my bottom again? Yeah. That's sad. Well, I've never seen it. Yeah, but you're not a female woman, though. Yeah, but once once she gets down to the bottom area, you can always explain it away. Like you say, I love mustard. I just happen to have um, such a, a fondness for this particular condiment that uh, when I was high on mustard one day, <laughs> um, and I was furtherly, further intoxicated by something like Tabasco sauce, uh, you know, I, I had to have it done. And I didn't get paid for it. I didn't get paid, it was a matter of either have this tattoo on your bottom or you, you're basically going to... You know what I'd do? <clears throat> Thinking about it, what I'd do is, because you would insist on having the oil of mustard on one cheek, so I'd do that, take the money, and then I'd have a pot of Dijon mustard tattooed on the other cheek. That's clever. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your favourite one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Although... So you've looked like a walking advertisement with your pants down. I'm not sure if I've ever tried it before. What, Dijon? But I would no, know. Tattoos. No. Tewkesbury mustard. I want to try that. Mm. Because that... I've got a feeling that could become my favourite mustard. Well, maybe it would. I've never tried it, but it's... Tewkesbury mustard is a mixture of mustard and horseradish. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, you're a fan of horseradish, of course. And that sounds very appealing to me. <coughs> very appealing. Well... That would be quite easy to just to do, wouldn't it? What, to try it? Well, just to make your own Tewkesbury mustard, so you don't have to waste your money and buying a pot of it. Oh, no, I, I, I wouldn't trust myself. Um, I'd have to try the genuine stuff first before I tried to make it. So you know what you were picking? So I'd know, yeah, so I'd know where I needed to go with it. Mm. <coughs> The other thing about this little chap here. What, what little chap? This little chap. Oh, the other one. It's a terribly effective plate warmer. Yes. Yeah, and you should not have cold plates, should you? No, never. That's the one thing I miss that we have at work, that not having at home, is the hot cupboard. Um, all of the crockery and pots and stuff. What, hot knives and forks? Dishes. Uh, no, the knives and forks are not stored in the kitchen. They're, um, they're ambient in the restaurant. There. Yeah, because you don't want to be burning your fingers, do you? No. I don't think I'll, I'll sit on that bench, but I think you'd have uh, yeah. You pretty much know about the minimum three months. Mm. So you have to be prepared then? Yeah. You just... Um, Give a nice stock of wine. Oh yeah. Actually, I'm a bit low at the moment. The wine's in the parlour. Right. Ah. On the booze stand. But because I've been so poor lately, the booze stand is not in very good fettle. But I've never been stuck. Um, I have to drive over the tops on the tiny roads hmm. to work and last winter the roads this road and all the associated roads were closed for about five days uh, completely closed up uh, and I got to work every day right in the 45 driving over farmers fields farmers lanes <laughs> but I made it yeah Where there's a willy, there's a way. It keeps on doing noises as if something exciting is going on. And then I look, and there's nothing there. That's not my bottom. 
Really? Dude. So, are we having some wine with this? Would you like a glass of wine? Yeah, like a car, we can't. Kind of... Sorry, that you only drink like wine. What about that, uh, this stuff here? Is it, is it Rioja? Yeah, a bottle of Rioja. Is that the bottle it opens and say, I'm buying a wine? And just kept it in there? Um, no, um, Madam opened that. Um, Madam decided she wanted to try crunkedness. Chinese Madam. So she left a bottle of red wine and then opened, opened that one as well and was then violently sick upstairs and downstairs and then slept for 18 hours. Right. So she didn't finish off? And decided that drinking wasn't for her. <clears throat> but it did mean that I got a rest. Oh yeah. Which was nice. Don't be saying that now, would you? No. Well, looks like is, is this lunch now yeah if it's three o'clock which is the correct time is it for me yeah. it looks like we're about to do proper lunch now hmm. i just have a quick key reader Ugh. Oh, you've um, changed the camera angle yes. as well. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Uh, uh, Cuts. The soup spoon. Mm. With a, a soup spoon stand. Indeed. I don't think I've ever used one of these. It looks a bit like an oversized. Uh, um, medicine spoon. Well, as your sense of smell isn't particularly good, we can rely on mine. Good. And um, first thing I can smell is ginger. And the first thing I can taste is ginger. Yeah, interesting. Mm. It's nice and spicy. The first crunchy bit was ginger, but I can also taste the the, the uh, chilies in there as well, and um, soy sauce. It was weird. Mm. I am. No, you're not. Well, <clears throat> contrary to all the bollocks I actually talked, I don't think you're weird at all, really. I think you're just how people should be. <laughs> The weird people are the ones that are just like everybody else. Yeah. They're not having their own opinion on things. The thing that really impressed me about that place on the Milton Road is it's the only it's the only place I've ever been to where they actually advertise their own stuff, curry. Yeah. I love that idea. Well, they're basically cooking for themselves. Mm. Milkston Road um, <clears throat> is for the area. Yeah, people come from places that aren't the area. It's, it's, a, it's an Asian area. You go to um, a few miles down the road, 
and obviously you get a very different thing altogether. You can buy some Moses, but they're twice the price. I, I really agree miss, twice the price. I really miss that kebab. You miss it. Mm. You miss that best kebab I've ever had. <clears throat> And I got all excited with your video when you pulled up under the Milkstone Road and I thought, I'm going to get a vicarious kebab here. <laughs> and you got fucking some roses. I was gutted. Gutted. And it looked really sad, you eating at the picnic table on your own. I know. It did look sad. I like that. It's surprisingly filling soup, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, being as it's mostly water, you'd expect it not really to do much, wouldn't you? Mm. It's got a little kick to it. Mm. I've started to really enjoy it. It's become a, a regular fixture on my lunch menu. <clears throat> You're way ahead of me today. What's going on? Food there. Was this <clears throat> typically how spicy would make it? Yeah. Yeah, it's about normal. I might have put one extra chili in if it was just me. But <clears throat> you thought. There's a possibility that um, <clears throat> that I wouldn't be able to handle it. Did you really think? Well, best word on the side of caution, is it? I know you can handle your hot stuff. <clears throat> the bit I like the best about it is um, the ginger. Keep on getting a, a big sort of ginger hit. I'm a big fan of not pureeing stuff. Right. I like the. Um, We've talked about it before, but I like peasant food. Yeah. Whichever cuisine, I like the... <laughs> <laughs> Is that a bit of chilli? <coughs> no. <laughs> Ginger. No, no, I, just, I swallowed it a bit wrong. Oh, wrong hole. Wrong hole, Vicky. <coughs> oh, gosh. <clears throat> I think I know what you're saying because um, and people who live in those poor rural areas got blenders. Yeah, they don't have those fucking twatty little hand whizzing one. <coughs> oh gosh, um, things. So I like big, robust, naive, brave, in your face. I always like to think that. If my food were a spanking, it would be a full bare-bottomed over-the-knee job. Oh, not that.